Noteworthy Podcast, where Child Literacy Summer Program is our focus, and we are so happy to have various children's book authors with us this summer. And our featured author for today on Noteworthy is Miss Tashonda McCormick. We are so happy to have her, and we're going to chat with her a little bit to learn a little bit more about her and why she wrote her book before we conclude with her actually reading uh, of her book. And I'm very interested in this one, of course, because this is the one that I have a passion for, but we'll talk a little bit more about that once she talks, tells us a little bit about herself. So, Miss, oh, I should say author McCormick, <laughs> tell yeah. us who you are. Um, hey, everybody. My name is Tashana McCormick. I am a mother of two small girls. I'm also a special education teacher for kindergarten through second grade. Um, I moved to Fayetteville about two years ago. We're originally from Sanford, so we mm -hmm. relocated here about two years ago, and um, I started teaching here in Cumberland County. So, And I'm the author of Forgiving Angie as you said so i'm excited to be here okay very good well then let's move on then and so you were saying you're from sanford i am yes ma'am okay. okay so you're very close by we're here in Fayetteville, north carolina okay well tell us about the book and why you chose to write uh, about such a topic especially for children yes ma'am um well as i said the name of the book is forgiving angie i wrote it when i was actually pregnant with my second daughter because I'm my only child so uh, and my husband has nine siblings like wow <laughs> same mom same dad nine <laughs> siblings so I was like I wanted to write a book about the struggles that siblings might face so the um the topic of the book is is as you know forgiveness so <laughs> I I wrote it so that in thinking that I'm going to have two daughters, they're going to have some times where they need to forgive each other. There's no way that they're just going to get along all the time. And as now at two and six, definitely have times where I have to force them <laughs> to forgive each other yeah. for things. So yeah. I just wanted something to show kids that it's okay to forgive in the society we live in. Everybody's so hard and like, Mm, one yes, one wrong yes. move one wrong move we're like never talking again so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure especially for kids that need something a little bit more on their level to understand okay it's okay for me to forgive it's okay for me to trust again it's okay for me to put myself out there again so that's okay all right well we know that as I said that's a, a, and especially right now in today's time times that forgiveness is a topic that we need to not only teach our children but teach everyone but if our children can learn that maybe it will be uh, passed on to future generations and the students or children will be able to to get along right. uh, with each other uh, for the things that is happening to them or things that are said to them or words that are said to them uh, have you found that in teaching about forgiveness that of course forgiveness is for the is for you or for that person but the other person also benefits from the forgiveness in that they are usually the ones who are hurting right yeah i think it's it teaches us that nobody's perfect and whenever we forgive we we actually i think we release ourselves because mm -hmm. sometimes the people that we are so hard-hearted towards are not even really thinking about what they've done or they might not even know they've done anything right, so we right. extend, extend that forgiveness we're actually teaching them something as well as releasing ourselves so okay well that's good because i find that a lot of times as i said with students or with children and all that they are especially when they are being brutal or bullying or whatever that it's coming out of a place of their own hurt and their own pain and probably mm -hmm. they don't even know why Right. But teaching about forgiveness or teaching the bully about forgiveness and how you need to actually uh, forgive that person may help that that particular individual to overcome some of the obstacles that they also are facing uh, as a child and doing the things that they're doing or why they're doing them. Right, I agree. Okay. Uh, well, tell us, what do you want us to know? 
what do you want us to get from this book? What do you want the parents? First, I suppose that you want the parents to get from the book, then tell us what you want uh, the students. And I think I may have already hit on that a little bit for you. Yes, ma'am. I mean, aside from just the overarching thing of forgiveness, I just want kids to know that it's okay to make mistakes too. It's okay to make mistakes That's good. That's when good. you make mistakes. Um, they're not necessarily going to be held over you for your for your whole life. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that even as adults, we make mistakes. And so not to hold our children, of course, hold your child accountable and responsible, but they're going to make mistakes as mm -hmm. well as adults make mistakes. So that's another thing in the story. The um, I don't want to go too much in detail, but the younger sibling, Angie, she breaks the um she breaks her brother's toy and he talks about how his parents had forced him to forgive her these other times but yeah. I want parents to know you know when your kids make mistakes forgive them too because right, right. a lot of times as parents especially me having the two young children there are times where I'm just like <laughs> so you know I and then I, I'm brought down a little bit because I'm like okay remember what you did yesterday remember what you did last week and they're still mm -hmm. learning you're a full-grown okay. adult yes. <laughs> so. yes we have to model that behavior for, right. for them yes okay. right yes ma'am so right. that's good yeah because I, I, I know uh the modeling of the behavior especially for the forgiveness because we tell you know we teach them we'll tell them i'm sorry but do we ever Mm -hmm. As you said, tell them they're sorry, we're sorry, or do they ever hear us telling anyone else um, right. that we're sorry? And they emulate what they see and hear more so than what we try to tell them uh, what to do. So you're quite right with that. The parents need to practice, I think, a lot of what we're trying to teach. Or they will, if they don't even try to tell them, if they see us doing it, then they will will do it themselves. Okay. Okay, so now tell us. Um, what else did you want us to know? I know there are lots of things. And you're a teacher, right? I am. Yes, okay. I am. Okay. Do you use this in your class? Um, I actually teach special needs. So last year I was in a third through fifth grade setting. So I did use it with them. Um, kindergarten through second grade, they are more as, uh, with the um, demographic that I teach. It'll be harder for them to grasp. But when we did a, um, a segment in forgiveness, in the third and fifth, third through fifth grade um, setting, I did use it. And I mean, I had to, um, you know, bring it down to the, a level that they could understand, but it helped them to just, what can I say? Not exactly forgive because they can't grasp the concept of forgiveness, but mm -hmm. just get along, mm -hmm. put it that way, learn how to talk to each other better, learn not to hit because, you know, with, with some in that setting, that's their first, you know, response. So I taught them things. Bonds, like, yes. Right. Yeah. So I taught them, you know, remember in our story, did, did, did the brother hit the sister or did he come up with something else, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But in the general ed setting, I think it will be very beneficial for them because it's, it's very easy. It's a very easy to con concept to understand the way that I've written it. So, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. All right. Well, have you been able to get it into any of the uh, schools as yet? Or is that your plan? I have not yet. I guess I'm looking for the right avenues to do that. I've um, I've contacted a few people, but as of yet, I haven't been able to. But I, that is one of my goals I would like to do. Yes. Okay. All right. Because I think that's very beneficial. Um, as I say, that's one of the things that I'm very interested in, uh, uh, an advocate of is forgiveness and feel like that if the world would be more forgiving, the world would be so much of a better place because we carry so much hurt and pain uh, that with uh, around with us so that we aren't able to move forward and grow and have any depth in our lives uh, because of that, that deep root of pain. Uh, and and simply, we just need to release it. And right. once we've done that, life is so much better. Uh, for us. I, I agree. Yeah, a lot of times I think that the things that we lash out at other people are even unforgiveness for somebody else. Like mm -hmm. it could be something that happened years ago right. and we just recognize something as a trigger and then we're, unfor we're 
in a state of unforgiveness towards yeah. somebody that hasn't even did anything yet. <laughs> All so. over again. Right. But we do, we carry those baggages with us and, you know, whatever that trigger is, you know, it turns it over, turns on uh, our emotions uh, for that. And so we really need to deal to deal with it and deal deep uh, without doing that. Because we do, I do some forgiveness retreats and some workshops and counseling of whatever on forgiveness. And usually that you get down to the bottom line it's all about needing to forgive someone that has right. caused the pain, that has caused you to behave and to act the way you do. We have those um, mental blocks that we have placed up and haven't allowed us to move to move forward. And right. we need to be able to do that. Okay. Um, so how can uh, we connect with you? Okay, I'm on, um, I have a YouTube channel that's called Sean Stories and on it, I read, uh, I have a lot going on, so on <laughs> it, I read, uh, I do read aloud virtual story time on there, as well as I have a, um, an actual podcast for moms I started up a couple weeks ago, oh, so okay. um, yeah, that's called Sean Stories on YouTube, and I'm also at Sean's World on Instagram, and okay. on on Facebook, I should have named them all the same, they're all different, but <laughs> on Facebook, it's Tashonda N. McCormick, and um, yes, that, those are my main handles, I believe, yes, Okay, ma'am. okay, okay, all right, so hopefully we'll be able to find you, we'll probably put those up again at some point, so that we'll be able to see uh, where you are, uh, because I'm hoping that we'll be able to, I know some of our classes will be having using your book for some discussions uh, throughout the year at New Life Christian Academy, and um, as well as in our daycare, we teach, we started three years old teaching about forgiveness and asking okay. and saying you're sorry, and working with them uh, with that and trying to have that continue up through all the grades, so it, sometimes it's difficult, but okay. it makes life a lot easier for the ones who have learned that and can move on uh, with that childlike uh, faith and belief in what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay, is there anything else you'd like to add or tell us today? Um, well, I can tell you, you can find Forgiving Angie on Amazon.com as well as Walmart.com. Or if you want a signed copy, just reach out to me. I'll mail it to you. That's fine too. <laughs> okay. And okay. I also, um, I'm working on a uh, with Forgiving Angie, I want it to be a series. So I've actually written three other children's uh-huh. books. So we're talking about things like, in this one, we talked about forgiveness, of course. And the next one, we're going to talk about telling the truth. It's called Tell the uh-huh. Truth, Timmy. Okay. And then I have another one called Stinky Stanley, where we talk about personal hygiene. <laughs> so I have quite a few. And then I also well, have, yeah. Yes, uh, you need to get that one done quickly. We're going back <laughs> to school in the heat. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I like I like the way I've written them because they they tell they get the message across, but in a funny way. Yeah. Okay. So okay. I have those as well as I'm actually writing an uh, adult book up, um, Proverbs devotional. So oh, okay. That that one actually should be finished later on this year. Okay, so you're quite busy over the summer. Is this what you're doing during the um, pandemic? Are you home? You're writing? Yes, yes. Um, I'm fortunate enough that the daycare that my daughters attend has remained open and everybody's healthy. So I've actually had some time to just write and have a relaxing summer. So (laughs) yes, ma'am. Good self-care. I'm sure you definitely need that with the population that you're teaching and not and well, teaching period, you needed some self, a lot of self care time um, mm-hmm. when you, whenever you can get it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. So it has been a pleasure having you on I, and enjoyed it. And I'm sure everyone else will as well. So uh, we're getting ready to, if you have nothing else, we're going to let you hear your, the story. Just trying to read her story on Forgiving Angie. So stay tuned once we sign off here from the Noteworthy Podcast with Norma McLaughlin uh, and today's uh, featured guest, Miss Tashonda. Oh, I shouldn't say, I keep saying, I want to say author. Author. <laughs> yes, Tashonda yes. McCormick. And thank you again for joining us today. Yes, Until next thank time. You. Okay, thank you. Oh.
Hi everybody, my name is Tashana McCormick and today I'm going to be reading a copy of my story, Forgiving Angie. You can find it at walmart.com as well as amazon.com for purchasing. And I am so excited to share it with you, so let's go ahead and get started. And this is my daughter's copy, so it's a little bit roughed up, that's her favorite book, so. <laughs> Words still the same, still an awesome story. Frankie sat in his little armchair, arms folded, ready to pout. He was upset. Frankie loved a lot of things, you see. He loved his mom and dad. He loved his friends. But what he really loved was his supersonic, muddy ready moat boat. It was his favorite toy, and Angie had just broken it. This was not the first time his little sister had destroyed something that he held dear. One time, Angie had snuck into his backpack and smashed all of his cookies to pieces. He had been waiting for those cookies all day. Another time, he had come home from school to find all of his crayons broken in half. Frankie even believed that Angie had eaten a few of them. His parents had convinced him to forgive his little sister those other times, but this was unforgivable. As he sat there fuming, Frankie decided that there was only one thing he could do, get rid of Angie. I know, he thought, I can take her down to the mall and sell it. I know someone will pay for a baby sister, maybe even a whole five dollars. Then I could take the money to the sweet shop and buy a boatload of candy. Frankie pondered this idea for a minute, but then realized that it just wouldn't work. He would never be able to give that much candy past his mom without being questioned. Frankie sat for another minute or two, then cried out, I got it! I will build a rocket and blast Angie off to the moon! This is a great idea, he thought. He had helped his dad build plenty of things around the house. All I will need is some tape, some glue, a hammer, nails, a screwdriver, or is it a wrench? Some screws? What's the difference between screws and nails anyway? And what will I use to make it fly? Frankie began to think that the rocket idea was a little too big for him to do all on his own. And Dad would never help. Mom complained about his directions in the car. He definitely wouldn't know how to get a rocket all the way to the moon. Finally, Frankie came up with a plan that he was sure would work. He would put his sister into a box and mail her to their grandparents. Grandma and Grandpa lived far away but always loved when he and Angie came to visit. He was sure that they wouldn't mind if Angie came to live with them. He wouldn't have to worry about her breaking his things ever again. Frankie hopped up excitedly and began to put his plan into motion. He decided that the first thing he should do is write a letter to his grandparents to go with the Angie package. He grabbed a pen and paper, sat down at his desk, and began to write. But as he started writing, he also began to have some doubts about his decision. If he did send Angie away, who would help him reach the sweets bowl all the way up on top of the high counter? And who would be there to play pretend with him? And who would stay inside and color with him on rainy days? But could he really forgive his sister for what she had done? Just then, Angie came waddling slowly into the room with a sad look on her face. In her tiny hands, she held the pieces of his supersonic, muddy ready moat boat. Holding the boat out to him, she said in a small voice, Sorry, Frankie, me broke it. Taking the boat from his sister's hands, he saw that it was wrapped with rubber bands and covered in sticky pieces of tape. Angie had tried to put Frankie's boat back together all by herself. While Frankie had been coming up with a fix for his little sister, his sister had been trying to come up with a way to fix things for him. In that moment, Frankie decided to forgive his sister. After all, he could get more cookies, he could get more crayons, he could even get a new boat. But where would he 
ever find another Angie. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for listening. Again, you can purchase Forgiven Angie on Amazon.com or Walmart.com, um, as well as on my Facebook page, Tashonda M. McCormick, Facebook.com slash Tashonda M. McCormick. You can reach out to me there by messenger, and I can send you a signed copy if you would prefer that. Again, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, and I appreciate it. Have a good day.